the analogous case where k is even, i is 1, and j is k over 2, um, by the same method, the linear annihilator method. Um, and then two cases built off of these. So instead of i being 1, we now let i be arbitrary, but it also must multiply the, the previous condition. So um, we have 2k plus 1 times i and, and k times i um, for the odd case and analogous for the even case. So all three of these were proved with the same method. But it became clear that this wasn't going to be um, an all-encompassing technique. So instead, I looked at what's called the Laurent phenomenon. Okay, so I was able to show the entire conjecture in the backwards direction. So if these um, k, i, and j satisfy those criteria, um, then we have integrality. And the Laurent phenomenon says that if the initial conditions are now uh, formal variables, they're not just n numbers, there's some variable x, i. Um, if we can show that the sequence is now um, Laurent polynomials rather than integers, uh, we'll have the integer property for free. Because Laurent polynomials have uh, our rational functions with the denominator being just a monomial with no coefficient. So if we let the, the initial variables be 1, we got an integer. Okay? So this is all I want to say about the surprising integer sequences. And I now want to move into surprising rational sequences. Okay, so recall that at the beginning I defined a recurrence uh, like this. So we've got a recurrence of order k, xn is equal to some function of the previous values. And now instead, uh, I want to generalize this a bit. Okay, so I want to consider something called an m recurrence. So we're making some changes. On the left-hand side, we're, we're raising this xn to some power, integer power, that's greater than 1 now, strictly greater than 1. And we're also allowing xn to be... Um, in the input on the function on the right hand side. So in this talk I'm going to require that f be some rational function and that the power on xn in this function has to be uh, strictly less than m, some integer strictly less than m, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. <coughs> so what we're going to get from this um, is in, in order to compute xn we have to solve now a degree m equation in xn. Right? We've got some values as our initial conditions um, and we need to, to solve this, this degree m equation in order to get the next value in our, in our sequence. And moreover, we get then m possibilities for the next value in our sequence. So instead of producing just one single sequence, we're now producing an infinite number of sequences given one set of initial conditions. We're also expecting then to produce complex numbers because we're solving these higher degree equations. Okay. So what I'm interested in is looking for m recurrences that produce rational numbers when we're expecting them to produce complex numbers. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to first look at an integer sequence or a rational sequence and we're then going to consider uh, the sequence of ratios of this sequence. So now instead of the sequence gn, I'm going to look at the sequence gn plus 1 over gn. Right. This is now obviously a rational sequence if we started with a rational sequence. Okay, and then I want to find an m recurrence that annihilates this sequence of ratios. So then we'll have an m recurrence that obviously generates rational numbers because we've kind of already prescribed it to do so. And so we can generalize this m recurrence um, to now find m recurrences that, uh, that produce rational numbers but weren't already um, expected to do so. Okay, so the, the integer sequence that I'm going to use uh, is the SOMOS sequence, but not the one that I showed you before. Uh, it's the SOMOS 4 recurrence, which is the same uh, idea as the previous one. So the, the original SOMOS that I told you is order 6, right? so we have to look 6 terms back. This now is, is order 4, um, and in addition we've got these coefficients, these alphas and betas. Okay, again, we're going to let the initial conditions all be 1. Um, it's also known that this recurrence produces integers. Uh, even if the, if the coefficients are any integer, not just ones like they are in the SOMOS 6. Okay. All you need to know, though, is, is that it produces rational numbers. Um, just if, if you don't believe me, you know that at least it produces rational numbers. Okay. Okay. And instead of looking at the ratios, I'm going to actually look at the ratios <coughs> of the ratios. Okay. So we're going to look at the sequence Fn, which is Sn plus 2 over Sn plus 1, divided by Sn plus 1 over Sn, which is this uh, term here. Um, and I claim now that this two recurrence here annihilates this sequence of ratios of ratios of the SOMOS 4 sequence. Okay, I originally proved this directly, uh, but later found this paper due to Hohn and Swart in 2008 that has a result that implies uh, this result here. Right, so uh, I'm 
not going to prove this, this to you, but just um, take this um, faith that this um, tumor occurrence here does in fact annihilate uh, our uh, sequence of ratios of ratios of somos total. Well, based with DIN, right? One of the kinds. It is, it is, yes. Right. Uh, you need to do, I mean, if you just uh, look at the recurrence and, and reorder it a little bit, you'll get an order two, two recurrence. This here is an order one, two recurrence. So you have to find another two, uh, another recurrence, um, solve those both for uh, F n plus two, and set them equal to each other. Oh, so it's not completely routine. It's not completely routine. It's routine, not completely. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. So I told you that, um, that we've, we're producing now an infinite number of sequences. Okay, so I want to show you kind of how I think about those. Okay, so I'm going to look in the case where alpha and beta are both equal to 1. Okay, so for every fn minus 1, we have two possibilities for fn. So what we're going to do is we're going to store them in a binary tree. Okay, so we start off with f1 equals 1. Uh, in order to find the values for f2, we substitute into our two recurrence up there, and we get this quadratic equation that we need to solve. And so we have two possibilities then for f2. We get 2 or 1. Okay. Uh, now, again, we do the same thing uh, for if f2 is equal to 2. I'm not going to continue on down this one branch because we know what that's going to look like. Uh, it's going to look like the same as the whole tree. Okay. Sorry, so, what, say that again. What was the reason that the other Oh, because. Uh, the, tr the tree below 1 is really identical to the whole tree, <coughs> an infinite tree, so, yeah. This repeats. Right, right. Okay, so, uh, so the children of 2 here are 1 and 3 fourths. Uh, and again, we know what the children of 1 are, at least up to two levels, I computed them for you. So we see that. Then the children of 3 fourths are 2 and 14 ninths. Again, we know what the children of 2 are. Um, and finally, uh, we can fill out those last two leaves there. Well, they're not really leaves. We continue on. Okay. So uh, I want to point out to you that the branch that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 14 ninths, and 69, 40 ninths is our SOMOS 4 ratios of ratio sequence. Everything else um, turns out to be just a repeat of those numbers on that branch, uh, but it may not be obvious to you right away. Uh, it will be obviously in a couple of slides. Okay. So now we've got this two recurrence that produces uh, rational numbers because it was prescribed to do so. So what I'm going to do now is show you um, a generalized version of this two recurrence. Form. You mean there are only finitely many numbers that appear in the tree? No, there's infinitely many numbers that appear. Uh, but they're only the numbers that appear in the sequence of so almost four ratios of ratios. Yeah. Um, so are you saying that there's some walk in the tree uh, mm -hmm. that just keeps going downward, and every number that appears in the tree appears on that walk? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, here's now a generalized version of this. Okay, so instead of writing xn and xn minus 1, I'm just going to call these x and y. So we've got some two recurrence, which is a quadratic in y times x squared plus a quadratic in y times x plus a quadratic in y. And I claim that if we let the initial conditions be 1, or the only initial condition be 1, um, then the sequence tree that's produced is rational if these two criteria here hold. Okay, so the first criteria if you look at it, it makes this two recurrence uh, symmetric in xn and xn minus 1. And this point is, is the key to the proof. Um, I should mention that the two recurrence satisfying this first uh, condition is known as the euler shiles correspondence. And it's well known in the theory of elliptic curves to have some nice ration, pro rational properties. Um, and so some of this uh, is, is kind of restatement of these properties in a different setting. Um, and of course, uh, remember, the, the two recurrence that we had for the uh, SOMOS 4 ratios of ratios is, in fact, a special case of this uh, with these uh, substitutions here. Okay. And it does satisfy property 1, A1 and B2 are equal, A0 and C2 are equal, and, and B0 and C1 are equal. Um, and, and I'll let you check for yourself that this, in fact, is a uh, square of a rational number, as long as alpha and beta are rational. Okay. So now let me prove to you why this is true. So here's the, the two recurrence restated for you, um, uh, with now with the substitutions from first criteria being made. We're going to proceed by induction on n. So we're going to assume that xn minus 2 and xn minus 1 are rational, and then prove that xn is rational. 
the base case, we were given that x1 is equal to 1, so we got that for free. x2, we need to show is rational. Uh, but x2, of course, is a solution to the polynomial equation p of x comma 1 equals 0. Um, if you'll notice, the discriminant of this polynomial is exactly the, the quantity in the second criteria, which we assumed was a rational number squared. So that means that the solutions to this uh, quadratic equation are, of course, rational. So we've got the base case. Now let's do the induction step. So we're going to assume that xn minus 2 and its two children. So we're going to pick a specific xn minus 2 and look at its two children. They're going to be assumed to be rational. Those two children are, of course, solutions to this quadratic equation, p of x comma xn minus 2 equals 0. Since p was symmetric because of criteria 1, we know that uh, p of xn minus 2 comma xn minus 1 must equal 0. Okay, so that's the key. So now we'll look at the two children of xn minus 1. Right. Those two children, of course, are the solutions to this quadratic equation. But because p was symmetric, we know that, p, that xn minus 2 is in this set of solutions. So since that was rational, the other root must also be rational because the product of the roots is the constant term, uh, which is rational. Okay. Let me point out to you uh, that this is basically as far as we can go with this kind of argument. Um, if we had a, two rec uh, a recurrence of order 1 that was, say, degree 3, we would lose this fact here, right? Because the product of the roots now uh, is still the constant term, but we've only got that one of these roots is, is rational. Okay, so the other two could be complex conjugates. Right. Okay, so now we've got this two recurrence of order 1 that, that's very general, that encompasses much more than the Stomach's four ratios of ratios. And, um, and we know that it produces rational numbers. So now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and look at how we can get higher order two recurrences. Um, and we're going to start with, uh, with the Stomos again. So remember, we had this two recurrence of order one here, um, but we know that Fn is just defined in terms of the terms in the Stomos sequence. So we can make the substitution into this two recurrence um, to get now a, an order three two recurrence that now annihilates the, the SOMOS, 4 race, uh, SOMOS 4 sequence. Okay? So we started off with an order 4 recurrence, and like I said, we got down to this order 1 recurrence by taking two order 2 recurrences and setting them equal to each other. Okay? So now when we make the substitution back in, uh, we're basically unfolding. Um, we now get an order 3 recurrence that annihilates the SOMOS sequences. But as we'll see, it actually annihilates a whole lot more and I think it's interesting to see what kinds of sequences we get when we iterate this particular two recurrence. <coughs> so now I'm going to show you what the sequence tree looks like um, in the case when alpha and beta are equal to 1. So when we've got the original SOMOS form. So here's the sequence tree, and there's its two recurrence up at the top. Um, things I want to point out to you. Of course, we have the SOMOS 4 sequence here on this branch, 2, 3, 7, 23. Uh, some other interesting things arise. A lot of these uh, exponential sequences occur. So on this left-hand branch, we have this uh, sequence of 2 to the basically the floor of n squared over 4. Okay. This, is, this is surprising. This sequence does not satisfy the original, so the order 4, so most 4 recurrence. So it's surprising that we're getting it um, from this, this new recurrence. We also have a couple of exponentials, 2 to the n minus 3 here and 3 to the n minus 4. So we've got some mixed asymptotics going on. Okay, so we've got this one here that's um, 2 to the n squared about, and then we've got these that are um, powers just to the n. The other thing that we unfortunately get are rational numbers. Right? SOMOS was interesting because it was a, it was a recurrence that, that was expected to produce rational numbers, but in fact produced integers. Now we've got some integers showing up, or non-integers showing up. But if you look, it's not really that surprising, and I'll show you why on the next slide. So these are the three that I want to draw your attention to, these three exponentials. And I'm going to explain why they occur in a more generalized setting. Um, I should also point out that I'm sure there are other interesting integer sequences that arise here, uh, but these are the ones that I could find that had nice closed forms. So if you see, there's a 2, 4, 16, 48. Um, that's not an exponential sequence. Uh, and so it may continue on as some kind of integer sequence, uh, but I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't been able to prove anything in that sense. Could you pick up? I could, but I, yeah. 
All right. So just like we created this, this order 3, 2 recurrence um, for, for SOMOS 4, we can do the same substitution into that euler shaws correspondence to get a 2 recurrence of order 3. Now this isn't anything that we know produces integers um, because of how we created it, uh, but in fact we know that it does produce rational numbers uh, because we can show that the a n plus 1 is just a product of terms in our original euler shaws correspondence. And this is why it's not surprising that these non-integer rationals are showing up, right? Because um, the branches in our uh, SOMOS four ratios of ratios were not all just, they were all numbers from the sequence of ratios of ratios, but they weren't in that same order, right? So when we multiply things on one branch, we're not necessarily going to be getting an integer out, okay? But in this case, of course, we see that we're getting rationals. Okay, so now I'm going to explain to you why these uh, exponential sequences are occurring but in this more general setting. Okay, so I claim that the sequence gamma to the floor of n squared over four is annihilated by this more general two recurrence of order three. And the way to see this, oh sorry, if, if and only if uh, gamma satisfies this particular quadratic equation in our original coefficients. And the way to prove this is simply to substitute this gamma to the n squared over 4 into our recurrence and do some <coughs> simplification. And when you do the simplification, you get exactly this quadratic equation. Okay. In the case of SOMOS 4, uh, we see that if we make our substitutions, this is our quadratic we must solve. Uh, and so we see, in fact, that 2 to the floor of n squared over 4 is, in fact, um, occurring. Um, so let me also say... Uh, I'm not going to do it all out, but in, if you're just in the, in the case of alpha and, and beta as our coefficients, um, we get that alpha, you can show that alpha plus beta uh, to the n squared over 4 is going to be showing up in all cases. Right. Um, so, so we know that this, this gamma to the n squared over 4 is going to show up. What about the other two? The 2 to the n minus 3 and the 3 to the n minus 4. This is some, something that I think is quite interesting. So I'm now claiming that for every real number, psi, um, psi to the n is a solution to this 2 recurrence of order 3, uh, if and only if this uh, equality holds. Again, the proof is, is very simple. You make the substitution and you simplify, and what remains is then this exact um, equality, and, and so we know that um, it must be annihilated if this is true. Okay. In the case of SOMOS 4, with these uh, conditions, uh, we see that this is true, and so we know that psi to the n is a solution. Now, there's a big difference between being a solution to the rational difference equation and showing up in the sequence tree. Right? Just because e to the n is annihilated by this recurrence doesn't mean it's going to show up. Right? We know that we're going to be producing rational numbers, so of course e to the n can't be in the tree. Right. But if we started off with our initial conditions, e, e squared, e cubed, we would get a branch that is e to the n. Okay. So because in our sequence we see 2, 4, well that should be a 16, <laughs> 2, 4, and 16 showing up, uh, no, that's right, 2, 4, and 8, um, and then 3, 9, and 27 appearing, we know that the branch uh, 2 to the n minus 3 will be there, and 3 to the n minus 4 will be there. Also, we, we see, I didn't highlight it, but we also see a 4 to the n showing up. Um, I want to uh, quickly just mention um, some differences that we have between <coughs> the order 4 and the order 3. So the order 4 uh, recurrence was just a regular recurrence, a one recurrence, I guess. Um, and we know some nice things about its asymptotics. Okay? We know um, from some other people's results uh, that it's asymptotically the sequence produces asymptotically phi to the n squared. And phi is some number um, defined by some Weierstrass functions. From the order 3, we've observed that we see a bunch of different asymptotics. We have this gamma to the n squared. We have upside to the n. And we even have this constant branch of all ones. So everything, um, the, not everything that we produced, as I've mentioned, satisfies the original SOMOS 4 sequence I think, recurrence. And I think that's something that's quite interesting. Okay. Um, Something about the closed form. We know, again, from some other results, uh, that the order 4 recurrence produces a sequence that does have a closed form, but it's really nasty. It's in terms of Weierstrass sigma functions. It's, it's 
It's not an elementary function. I mean, it's beautiful that it shows up in some, some we can find this recurrent, this closed form, uh, but it's not something um, as nice as, as two to the n. So in the order three tree, we see um, that some branches can be written in terms of elementary functions, but you've got these exponentials. So uh, I finally want to tell you, uh, as if it hasn't been clear so far, how I've used experimental math in all of these topics. So in the first, it was quite obvious. I showed you this demo of how I programmed these, um, these algorithms to solve this general class of problems. In the other two, I didn't really say how I've used experimental math, so let me say it now. In the integer sequences part, I mentioned that we found these linear annihilators of these sequences produced by nonlinear recurrences. These linear run annihilators were conjectured by Maple. So um, I, I looked at the sequences and I noticed that their growth was not as quick as the SOMOS growth. Okay? They weren't growing like uh, something to the n squared. So that gave us a clue that maybe some linear function was going on here. Okay? So we then wrote some code and looked at um, conjecturing linear annihilators and from that we found this general form and was able to prove in addition, the initial conditions, they satisfy a piecewise polynomial, and that fact was originally proved by a program written by Dr. Zauberger. Uh, and finally, in this rational sequences section, um, the criteria that gave me the uh, euler shaws correspondence, the, the equality between some coefficients, and this um, thing that turned out to be the discriminant being a square of a rational number, those were both conjectured um, by looking through data. So I had a program that basically gave me every two recurrence of order one that seemed to produce rational numbers. And I looked then through all of these and noticed that I was having these nice equalities showing up. Um, finally, the existence of these exponential sequences was also conjectured by looking through a lot of data. So I looked at all of these, uh, these recurrences and noticed that I was getting exponentials every time. Um, and so then I uh, made the conjecture and was able to prove it. Um, these are a few references if you're interested in learning more, and I have many more references um, if you want. Um, and with that, I will stop. Okay. We have two minutes for questions by the audience before they get kicked out in order the committee to stay here. Are there any questions for Emily? By the audience? I was just wondering if I noticed when you were doing the tree, you, you had ordered all the branches. Yeah. Is there any kind of interesting, because it seemed to kind of right, snake it. Right, right. So I did, I did have a conjecture at one point, and I'm not, I don't think I actually looked too far into it, but I think that I was looking at the, Somos was looked kind of like a left, right, right, left, right, right. And I was okay. thinking like the plus or the minus in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the okay. code application. Yeah. In the case of, Homogeneous linear events relations mm -hmm. know that the ratio of consecutive terms converges in some cases mm -hmm. the dominant root of the characteristic polynomial. I wonder if in some cases of in some nonlinear cases one can associate a meaning to the ratio, mm -hmm. for instance in the small sequences mm -hmm. or the ratio ratios you know, what they converge to? Sure. <laughs> um, so, so in the case of the SOMOS, if you just look at the ratios, I believe, well, I'm not entirely sure, that uh, that the ratio is growing. I don't know that it converges. Because it's, it's alpha or it's phi to the n squared, so the ratios aren't going to be converging to anything. Um, but if you look at the ratios of the ratios, uh, that, that might be. And, and I don't know. I haven't looked at that, but that's a good question. The ratio of the ratios. So oh, yes. It's actually periodic, essentially, yeah. uh, because it corresponds with the mm -hmm. elliptic functions. As you right, know. right. Well, let's thank Emily again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.